Let's play a bit with Tokyo, the async framework of uh, Rust. Let's start converting our main function to an asynchronous function. This way, essentially, um, there's a ma macro that essentially rewrites this into some uh, block on code, which essentially uses this function body. It's more like a, a convenient function. And let's include um, the stuff we need. So, Tokyo Prelude. Let's include everything we need from them. Um, for this, we need um, to have some uh, timers. So, let's include Tokyo Time, the delay object, and the delay for function. And let's include, uh, of course, the duration object. Duration. And let's make a simple help helper function, which allows us essentially to sleep in the async IO world. So we do delay four. And we have to do this for a duration from minis. Yes, and we need to, an, an amount of things. Well, let's do this uh, milliseconds, and let's use it here as well. An unsigned integer, sixty-four or forty-six. All right. So let's just do our first simple um, implementation of uh, to see if the whole async I/O framework starts working. So let's just leave for 1000 milliseconds. Wait. And let's see if it compiles. Forgot some stuff. Exactly. It's not implemented. Exactly, we need to, of course, turn here the delay. So we have a running program now, let's execute it and we see hello world, but of course we also want to see if it actually delays the output. So let's sleep for two seconds and let's print it again below it. And we see Execute, we see hello world, hello world. So that's exactly what we let's get rid of these warnings. So we can just develop a little bit more peaceful because we know we are not always using all the dead codes. Notice essentially the explanation mark, marking essentially a, a crate level switch. Let's allow. Um, and use imports. And let's allow unused variables. So let's see if you execute now. Yeah, that's better. One and two. So this is the minimal program you can make essentially. Like a simple async IO function which actually sleeps within a wait and then essentially prints hello world again. And just to make this work is already amazing in a sense, right? If you can see what you can do with Rust in such a small time, with such a small program, it's just amazing. So let's imagine we're making some kind of system where we want to run, let's say, multiple async agents which essentially communicate with each other via a channel. So we could say we have one message generator, which is very simple. Um, let's make an async function of this. And we say, okay, there's a message generator. And this message generator will essentially just loop around and it will send a message on a channel because essentially we want multiple AC processes communicating to each other with channels. 
So essentially we want this channel to send a message. So let's see channel. But we of course need a channel for this channel. And channels are always split into two elements, one sender and a receiver. So this is the sender, because this one is actually sending the messages. And it will do a send. But we did not include yet essentially the channels. Very important, use the Tokyo channels here. Uh, we need here multiple producers, single consumer channels. And what we will need from them is the channel. And we want to have a sender and we want to have a receiver. Right. So now we can say send. Build this a little bit. Okay, message not found. That's logical, of course. Of course, we need a message, and the message will be struct. Message, and let's see. And let's make it an anon. And the message will be hello and world. Simple. Let's see exactly that's what I want. So, we need to send something. And as we can see, we have a signature of a value t, which which results in a result when it's sent there, right? So we want to capture all those paths. So of course, we're going to send now a very simple message, which is, um, of course, hello. And we're going to send afterwards world. But now we'll start with like only hello. And we need to check if it's sent correctly. So we can use here either an if let construct or we can use a match. Um, I want to stop the loop if we receive an error. So let's just do a very simple implementation of match. And of course, we have to await. Otherwise, essentially, this async function is not going to be uh, waiting essentially before for the message to be received. Um, and now we can filter out the results, then OK. Um, the OK essentially of the send function is nothing. That's wonderful. If that's the case, then let's sleep for 100 milliseconds. Again, we need to wait here, otherwise it doesn't take. If there's an error, then just ignore whatever the message is. And we are just going to print the line. And we're going to say um, error sending message. We don't have any parameters here. Perfect. And after the error print, we are going to break this loop. Very simple message generator. Let's see if we compile. Hello, not found in the scope. Exactly because, of course, we need to prefix with the name. So here we have message hello, mutable channel. Yeah. Because we need to have a mutable variant. And as you can see, everything compiles perfect. So once we have a message generator, we could imagine we also need some kind of uh, file sync for this, right? So we want to receive those messages and essentially save it to a file. So let's do this as well. So we have a message file sync. Again, now the multiple channel, but this now is a receiver. Which also receives, of course, our messages. And what this thing is going to do is uh, I'm going to perform a while loop. And while it is receiving correct messages, right? So we have here um, this channel. Um, 
I know this by heart. Uh, receive. And of course, we need to await this. Then we're just simply going to print the message. And it will be then message. Out of my top of my head, essentially, the channels, the return an option. So we need to destructure this out of the return value. So the message. Perfect. Let's see if this fits. Yeah, you can see the type signature is an option. So when you've set this up, we have very, very simple um, file sync. What we probably can do here is just like say um, writing the file, for example, this one. And so here we have a generator and here we have a message. So the only thing now we need to do is essentially hook those up together. And how we're we gonna do this, so we're gonna make like um, a transact transaction uh, receiver. And we're gonna make a new channel of the message type. And we are going to indicate 10. It's like a buffer size of 10. It means like this channel can hold like 10 buffers bef before essentially it starts back pressuring or uh, uh, returning no non, non values. So now we of course need to spawn the different async functions, right? So Tokyo spawn and then we have here the message generator and this takes a channel and this this takes the sending part of the channel, right? So this is like the T transmitter. So we have here the TX, and then we have the file sync. We also need to spawn that one. The file sync, which also needs a channel, which is now here, RX. Now we need to do this. So now we have this uh, spawn and the things. Of course, this needs the receiving part. So now essentially we have spawn like, like a message generator. And that's sending messages to our file sync. And those are essentially running now on the same thread. This is this is very important because what I what I did was the I started essentially the Tokyo 0.2.16 with the RT core, right? This means that essentially all um, agents, let's say all futures are running on a single thread. And to be able to use the channels, I enabled essentially the sync. For the macro in the beginning, essentially, um, I needed essentially to enable this. And we have, of course, the time for all the time functions. Very important. So without this RT core, the, um, the Tokyo spawn function is not available. So it is important to know. So you cannot do it on, a, so that you have to do this differently on a multi-threaded runtime. All right, so let's see if this uh, compiles. Let's say, so the message cannot be formatted with the normal format. Uh, that makes sense, it's a debug thing. Ah, it cannot be formatted like this. Of course not, because it needs a derive debug. And see, now it compiles perfectly. So what we want to see is essentially like write the file like this. And every 100 seconds, we would like to see this, right? Um, and that's for two seconds. So we should see like 20 messages. And as you can see, it works like a charm. Next time I will cover 
some more of what Tokyo Yo and what now exactly did what happened here. Thank you for watching.